very own Mr. Michael Balansag. Mr. Michael, hi, are you there? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you uh, please show your camera? All right, one minute. Right, uh, while uh, Mr. Mikel is uh, fixing some issues, let us uh, start introducing our next speaker. Okay, Mr. Mikel Balansag is a licensed chartered professional in human resources by DCPHR, CAHR, United Kingdom, and a licensed chartered member of the Australian Human Resource Institute. He is also a Lean Six Sigma Design Thinking Certified, and uh, he has also a diverse people management portfolio, extensive performance improvement and people management background working for global organizations, including JP Morgan Chase and Company and Sutherland Global Services. His most recent engagement was with Alpha Aviation Group as the he uh, head of HR, HR and the CHRO where he innovated HR processes for a dynamic diverse and demanding aviation industry in charge heavily on the performance management process and serving as a technical labor advisor to the executive team, working with stakeholders and putting up subsidiaries. In 2019, Mikel landed on the 38th spot in the Filipino uh, top 100 Filipinos to follow on LinkedIn for inspiration and learning. The list provides iconic Filipinos to follow on LinkedIn, published by Marketing in Asia, a Malaysia-based online op-ed magazine aimed to empower millions of Asian brands and professionals. He also holds a degree in business administration from Angeles University Foundation and is currently taking up Bachelor of Laws at Lyceum of the Philippines University. As a UNICEF champion for children, he spends his free time volunteering focusing on disaster and humanitarian relief initiatives. Everyone, please welcome Mr. Mikel Balansag. Hi, everyone. Can, uh, can you hear me? Jester, can you hear me? Yeah, we're hearing you fine. All right, let me share my screen. So I'm excited um, for this session. Um, we've prepared a lot of speakers and have learned a lot from the previous speakers. And I'm also looking forward um, to learning from our future uh, speakers later on. I think this is really a great uh, platform, especially for us HR professionals um, in addressing uh, this issue that um, we currently have, which um, has never happened before. So let me share my screen. Jester, can you confirm if you're able to see my screen? Now we can hear you. All right, I'd like to start um, with this comic strip that I saw. Uh, on the internet, I think uh, two days ago, uh, that says, I guess I never realized how non-essential you are. So I think the same, we've, we all felt the same thing um, when the government, the Philippine government has announced, uh, had announced um, which uh, organizations, which type of companies can remain operational, which should be closed. And there were a lot of um, issues, a lot of um, comments going on the internet because initially they were not familiar uh, on the term non-essential. So eventually we, we all understood um, what non-essential uh, means. Uh, but I, this is a really, I think this is a really funny comic uh, here and we now understand that uh, nurses, those in the medical field, doctors, laboratory technicians, etc. are really um, 
uh, the important um, aspect of society uh, considering the situation as opposed to basketball stars, um, soccer players, etc. And on a corporate perspective, on a business perspective, it's actually HR as human resources who are who serve as the corporate um, frontliners. You now, what we um, we I'm sure you've had back to back to back meetings on business continuity, on ensuring that um, everything um, goes smoothly, on preparing all travel passes, preparing all COEs, um, and working from home is actually, um, I think the hours that we're spending working from home is even longer than hours that we spent uh, uh, at the actual office, right? Because there really is no limitations and um, your boss or your employees can will reach out to you at any point of the day. So um, for the next half an hour or so, um, we'll be talking about um, attracting, engaging, and retaining um, your employees, um, our precious talents during COVID-19. So there are a lot of um, organizations who opted um, to downsize, who opted to remove um, some or part of their employees to close some departments. But there are also other organizations who are continuously operational um, like uh, BPOs, they're continuously operational. Um, and we need to understand, especially for those of you who um, have employees working from home, we need to understand how we can continuously engage and retain them. And if you're still hiring, uh, the option to work from home is not an issue for you and you can hire people and conduct online onboarding, online training, then it's important to also understand how we can attract um, new talents because all, um, maybe most, most if not all organizations um, have actually shifted their business model, the way they do things. And the competition is actually uh, higher. It's, it's uh, more uh, stressful than ever because everyone is just, offering a lot of things just so they can fulfill their internal requirements. So over the last um, two months, we have seen a lot of organizations uh, closing down. Um, we've seen high uh, records of unemployment all over the Philippines. Um, I've shared this on my Facebook page because I am continuously monitoring and I wanted to understand the effect um, of COVID. So an airline, Thai Airways, uh, they're headed for bankruptcy uh, because of COVID-19. Uh, Uber had to lay off 3,700 employees because of COVID-19. Even Gold's Gym, which apparently is non-essential at this point, um, had to file for bankruptcy again because of COVID-19. We have JCPenney uh, in the United States. Uh, they had to file for bankruptcy as well. Um, even IBM, uh, who is a global tech player, um, had to lay off thousands of employees um, because of the current pandemic. And more recently, uh, I think just the other day, we saw from Manila Bulletin um, an internal memo which was shared publicly um, from Okada Manila uh, announcing that they would have to remove about a thousand uh, employees. So there are, um, this is an option, one option that business leaders are doing right now. Um, and um, apparently they thought that the only option is either to remove employees or um, they would eventually be out of business. So one thing is for certain, we will definitely, um, as with any other 
um, challenges. Um, Giselle had mentioned about 9-11. We will definitely get through it. We will get through all of these. Um, but only the strong and resilient organizations will survive. So it's important that, um, as what was mentioned again earlier, um, we have um, a BCP um, in place. We also know how to communicate um, with our employees. And we need to think long term. It's always important that organizations think long term um, in view of the current situation. So if you had to review your business model um, and consider um, uh, working from home or working from home, home option, then do it um, because this is the new normal as what they say. And all of these um, is actually a stress test. No, I'd like to think of this as a stress test for um, all organizations, especially for us as HR professionals uh, in our recruitment, in our employee retention strategies. Over the next year or two, or maybe in the next couple of months, you'll see this question. I think um, there are a lot of uh, candidates um, as soon as everything goes back to normal. Um, there are candidates who would ask this question uh, and they would ask, how did you respond to COVID-19? Remember, we have that part after the interview where we ask them if they have any questions. Um, if you have not received any questions in the past and they just say, no question, I'm sure moving forward, they would ask uh, this question. How did your company responded to COVID-19? What actions were taken? So it's important um, that um, we had, well, number one, facilitated um, work from home. If we had done that way later, then we may be accused of an uncaring attitude or maybe we may be perceived as um, we endanger the employee safety. So they would think, um, what if this happens again in the future and I'm part of this organization, will the company prioritize its um, profit over my safety? So the same goes for companies sending employees back to work uh, before it is definitely uh, or def uh, proven to do so. So there are organizations. I saw um, a BPO who I think in um, somewhere in Cebu, there's a BPO who opted to have employees continuously work um, in their um, offices and they just slept within their production area. Um, there are also um, organizations who had to terminate employees um, and it can be perceived as when um, this company has faced um, a really challenging period, um, they tend to be disloyal. So do I want to uh, put my loyalty in this company when they won't care for me um, if uh, things uh, get worse? So in those cases, actually both the surviving staff uh, the staff that uh, remains and the future potential hires would think um, if, yeah, your company is worthy of uh, their loyalty or not. It is important that um, how, how, it's important how we respond to COVID-19, how we respond will be the defining moment of our organizations in the future. So I mentioned that uh, this question, uh, the question earlier will be asked um, to you if you're an HR practitioner um, and you move to another organization, the CEO, managing director, general manager, or maybe just the head of HR reviewed, um, uh, interviewed you rather, and um, wanted to understand um, your um, agility, they would probably also ask, how did you respond as an HR uh, practitioner, as an HR manager, as an HR officer during the COVID-19 pandemic? And it will be the defining moment um, also for you as an HR practitioner. Um, what you do, what your company do um, is important not only to survive, 
but to thrive uh, during this recovery. So let's talk about uh, attraction strategies. Uh, what we'll do is um, we'll provide. Um, I'll go. I'll, I'll go through things very briefly. Provide examples, um, and let's also discuss potential impact of uh, the strategies that I'm presenting. Of course, these are purely recommendations. It still depends on your organization's um, budget, strategies, BCP planning, etc. But you can definitely pick. Um, one or two um, of these and present to your management or to your leaders um, as an alternative way of uh, doing your HR strategies. So in terms of attraction stat strategies, number one, it's important for us to build a good brand. Let's speed up the hiring process. If your organization is still um, hiring people, you're in the IT, you're in the um, BPO field or um, your employee just can um, accommodate people working from home, then um, speed up the hiring process. Consider, uh, as what I've mentioned here, virtual recruitment activities, do virtual interviews using Skype, using Zoom, Microsoft Teams, etc. You can even conduct virtual job fairs and you can actually um, send them um, a video of your corporate profile or just show it to them uh, to check if uh, they are up for the role. Um, and these examples of technology that I've presented, Skype, Zoom, Teams, even if you're using Skype for business, you can actually uh, send, as long as you send the candidate or anyone outside your organization with the link, they can uh, join uh, the conference or the meeting as long as they have the link. I think most of us thought that since this is Skype for business, um, this can only be done internal or we think that Microsoft Teams can only be done within um, the organization. But that's not true. Skype, Zooms, and Teams, as long as um, the candidate or anyone else outside your organization has the link um, or if uh, you've placed a password there, they can actually access, uh, they can access it and join uh, the conference. So by doing this, uh, you actually get uh, access to candidates way faster. You don't need to wait for their available schedules. You get to meet um, any targets that you have, especially if you're working with um, a client. So you don't need to schedule for an interview, wait for them to arrive. There are no travel times. You can schedule it anytime since they're at home anyway. So, and the hiring decisions will be, yeah, will be a lot faster. This also saves you the risk of hiring the wrong candidate for the job or the organization. This is true for traditional recruitment. Um, we're presented with a number of vacancies, with a number of requisitions that we need to um, close, say, within this month, within this quarter. And because we are HR and we do really a lot of things, a million things at one time, um, we tend to work on um, our requirements towards the latter part, towards um, the deadline. So what happens is we look for um, whoever is available and because the deadline is say, the client wants someone to be hired next week for a senior, say, web developer role um, and the client wants someone by Monday and today's Thursday. So what you'll do is you'll just look at your pool. Okay, this should suffice. Let me interview. I've interviewed five. Um, I think two of them can be trained, so let's hire. So that exposes the organization, the risk of hiring the wrong candidate. So do the hiring, um, your hiring process fast. It's online anyway, conduct virtual activities um, so that you can get the right talent. Next attraction uh, strategy would be, um, and this is true, um, even pre-COVID, um, I've seen a number of organizations who do this to attract uh, talent 
feel free to be creative. HR does not have to be um, routinary, does not have to be old school, does not have to be boring. We need to adapt to millennials, to Gen Z. Creative, use creative job titles. Um, consider job titles that would inspire impact, that would showcase purpose. So I've placed an example here instead of hiring for an HR generalist who actually does a lot of things, why not use HR Power Rangers since they are super um, humans anyway. So um, maybe that's an exaggerated example, but um, you get the point, be creative um, in um, creating um, your job titles to attract more talent if you just put um, web developer, there are a lot of companies who would hire for web developer. If you just put manufacturing um, officer, liaison officer, um, then it does not really inspire or showcase the purpose of um, the role. So by doing this, you actually build a really strong brand for your organization. Um, you provide um, a great um, impression of um, a good culture. You boost employee pride while minimizing expenses. There really is no expenses there. What's important to note um, is just to put some job title controls in place to manage internal equity. Um, so inter internal equity is... Um, a corporate term for comparison of positions within your business, um, ensuring fair pay. So just ensure that when you use creative job titles, you also you also put put something um, a policy in place, uh, just to be sure that there are no overlapping of compensations, etc. Because employees. Uh, need to feel that they are fairly paid compared to their co-workers. That's always important. They need to um, perceive that they are um, their payment, uh, their salary is within the uh, standard of organization or even higher. Otherwise, they may feel unvalued or eventually leave and look for another organization. So it's important that while you do this, you also put uh, something in place. Next um, is offer sign-on bonuses. No? And um, most organizations would think that signing, sign-on or signing bonus um, is always on, ca on a cash basis, which would um, increase expenses. But you can actually be creative uh, considering the situation um, uh, and uh, maybe just reserve the cash uh, bonuses for high demand talent or critical uh, roles for your organization and offer non-cash um, bonuses for other roles. And I've provided, there are thousands of possibilities, but you can provide um, apart from one-time hiring bonus, which you are not really um, obliged to pay upfront. You can uh, do it on a maybe 30, 60, 90 day uh, milestone or just give half on their third month, half on regularization or half upon regularization and half on their first year just to ensure uh, tenure. Apart from that, you can also guarantee that, okay, um, if you get hired within June, um, work from home until end of year, and you don't get to back to the office until 2021. I think that's a good uh, deal, uh, especially there are employees, there are talents right now who are really, um, they're, they're starting to like uh, the idea of working from home. So you can offer that. There is no additional cost for you. It can actually save you um, if you go back to uh, business as usual because of uh, the seat, um, internet cost, um, electricity, etc. cetera. Um, if, you, if you feel generous, you can also offer one-year internet subsidy. 
um, especially if you are allowing employees um, to work from home. You can offer a one-time double leave days. Where we would be, we would be doubling your uh, leave for the first year, considering this pandemic. So, for you to maybe put it in a verbiage, yeah, for you to spend more time um, with your family, we prioritize um, uh, your uh, personal um, challenges as well, and for you to. Um, provide more time with your family instead of giving 15 uh, paid leaves this year, we would be giving you 30. That's one thing that you can offer and just make sure that it's uh, everything is written um, in black and white, that it's something that's just for the interim. Um, it's part of their employment and um, it can change later. Um, Another thing that attracts talent is HMO. Um, so we all fear uh, for, for us, for our family members, um, safety and health because of COVID-19. Um, even if only one person is allowed to go out, you may have family members who are working um, in um, clinics, in hospitals, in BPOs, and they can... Um, and they would go out, they just present their COEs and all. And you fear um, for your home, your family's safety. So it's important. Um, so HMO, health insurances, is now important for, um, for people, for talents. So if you can't, if it's too much for you to offer paid dependence from day one, um, and you're currently providing HMO, but you don't give it until their sixth month, why not um, showcase and market it as uh, you're paying it starting from day one. You're covered from day one um, on our HMO program, which by the way, most HMO covers um, COVID-19 cases. Um, if you have an extra budget, then yeah, you can also offer um, paid dependents. Uh, maybe after three months or if you can um, accommodate starting from day one. And this would really um, set you um, above the competition in hiring talent. But I recommend doing this on really those positions with um, high demand, <coughs> sorry, or um, really critical talents within, uh, critical positions within your organization. Next. Next is to utilize um, third-party recruiters or headhunting firms. This is also an option um, for organizations um, in ensuring business continuity. So um, if you're already providing um, referral incentives to your employees, you can also utilize third-party recruiters, headhunting firms, uh, to help source or hire high demand jobs, managerial roles, and you can use them to hire permanent or temporary um, staffing. This provides you uh, minimal time, resources, and money on actual sourcing, on actual screening of candidates, interviewing, um, and hiring the right candidate, and it would give you more time to focus on other necessary um, activities that you need to do as an HR professional. So one example is um, our sales ecological group. We offer headhunting solutions. We're one of the very few headhunting firms who are still um, operational and still providing um, talents, technical talents, managerial talents to our um, clients all over Luzon and uh, Visayas and some in Mindanao area. Um, maybe for those who have not, who have never engaged um, or does not know how headhunting works, it's important. Um, how headhunting works is that you'll, you'll hire the employee. It's not similar to a manpower agency where the employee is employed by uh, the third party company. The headhunter actually helps you find the right talent based on your requirements, but you'll eventually hire uh, the employee and you just provide a one time hiring fee to the headhunter. Um, if you're considering that, it's important to note uh, four things 
and it's not here. Um, but it's important to note four things. Number one, um, important to note how much is the rate for hiring um, a person. So you're looking for um, an IT manager um, with this and that number of qualifications. It's important to understand what's the rate um, the one-time uh, hiring rate of the headhunter. It's also important, number two, to check the guaranteed period. The guaranteed period provides you a guarantee if and when the employee leaves or resigns uh, within that guarantee period that the headhunter should replace uh, that candidate um, at no cost to you. So it's important to check if they most would provide one month guaranteed period three months there are some who provide six up to six months of guaranteed period uh, to you uh, number three is also check and confirm that your headhunter uh, has a no hire no pay policy you should not be um, providing anything up front your goal is to hire people so you should only be paying once you get to hire someone from them and lastly, just um, for your internal process and to provide you flexibility, also check to, uh, to ensure that it is non-exclusive, meaning you can engage um, to as much headhunters as you'd like, especially if you're uh, hiring for a um, massive number of um, hard to fill vacancies that you can engage with two, three, four, five headhunters to provide you talents all at the same time. And only you'd only pay them as soon as you get to hire somebody. So that's how it works. Another um, strategy on attraction is, um, again, if you have the budget, but I strongly recommend this, to temporarily increase your pay for high demand roles. Look at your organization um, and identify which are uh, the high demand roles, which are crucial for the business at this point and provide something to them. Maybe not increase their basic pay, but provide something um, to temporarily assess them. Uh, temporary help them with the situation um, that would create a really strong um, impact on your organization and that would also attract a lot of um, talent so this is similar to providing sign-on bonuses um, and this would have yes i agree would increase your expense but it can actually become less expensive than losing these employees in the long run. You don't have the budget. I need to hire this person. Um, it's a really, say, I need to hire um, a technical support representative, a senior technical support representative for uh, my firm. Um, and I need to hire 10. Um, and I need them by next Wednesday. Um, but my, my current budget is this. But there are a lot of other organizations offering higher or providing the, uh, this to them. So you get to lose in the competition. And even if you hire them um, and they discover that a number, there is another company who's offering uh, the same job for a higher role and they still get to work um, at home or within the area, then you'd eventually lose these people. Um, and what happens is it increases your cost because you need to provide uh, to a lot um, funds again for recruitment cost, for training cost, etc. So it's important that when you factor things um, in decision making for HR, you factor um, everything from hiring, training, etc. for them. Next is, um, and this is also something um, that I'd like to share, um, is to connect to companies that, uh, that had laid off employees. So I've mentioned earlier a number of companies um, who opted to um, remove 
significant number of their employees. So it's also good to connect um, to these companies. There are a number of local companies, global companies as well that you can um, go to. And one example is Agoda. So Agoda has recently removed a significant number of employees. Um, but they wanted to still take care of um, these uh, separated employees. So they've created this site. You can screenshot this um, sites that google.com slash view slash Agoda Talent Directory. Um, and it provides you um, the list of employees with their qualifications, um, with their current location, um for you to hire them so they're still helping uh, their employees um, to land a new job all right so uh, that's it for attracting talents we'll move on to um, retention strategies so how do we retain um, our existing workforce considering the pandemic? Number one is offering flexible work hours and schedules, which I'm confident that most of you had already done. So consider offering staggered shifts or longer days to allow for an additional day off during the week if you're used to operating five days a week maybe make it four by eleven so make it monday tuesday uh, seven to seven including lunch and then wednesday would be an extra day off thursday friday seven to seven again then they, they still have the weekends however whatever works for you that would provide them um, more time with their company maybe um, a time for them to go out and do groceries um, or maybe a time for them to teach their children um, at home who, who are um, homeschooling, etc. So you can do that uh, without really breaking their total number of hours. This is actually supported by um, Department of Labor and Employment via this labor advisory number 17, which was released just last week. So this, what this does is it promotes employee retention um, while enabling your organization uh, to continue to operate. The downside on this is it may require more management intervention um, to ensure that all assignments and work is being covered. So that's a downside, but um, I think the upside outweighs uh, the other by promoting um, employee retention because they feel valued and that you care for their um, um, family and their personal life as well. Next is to offer opportunity to work remotely for jobs that typically can. So I've had a number of discussions with organizations, probably in um, organizations in the manufacturing field, not in the IT field, not in the BPO field, um, in the retail field, where they thought that working from home is not really an option for their employees. But we can actually be creative in providing them an opportunity, maybe at least um, a few of them an opportunity to still work remotely. So if you have um, organizational initiatives, projects, um, in the company, then you can consider tapping the services of these employees um, and go out uh, of their uh, typical nature of job. An example I provided here, a maintenance technician. So a maintenance technician, someone who does maybe the maintenance of the building, can't really work from home, but he can help research latest trends in machinery, in tools to increase efficiencies and impact um, post-recovery. So uh, as soon as you're back to business as usual, then you're ready because you've engaged an expert on the ground and uh, he spent, he or she spent time uh, to conduct research on these things. At the same time, you have provided um, him or her with an opportunity to still work from home. 
So this definitely retains your employees um, who are really important uh, during once you're back to recovery and at the same time you're improving your organization. It's just important for you to draft a policy to set expectations and it's important for you to share uh, their expectations. And this is also supported by Dolly Labor Advisory number 17. You can um, send your employees to other branches. You can make your employees work on other functions and other roles, etc. Next, and I'll try to make this really fast since we're going over time. Um, also reallocate um, employees and the responsibilities to balance uh, the workload. So the if you have a facilities department, if you have a BCT team, if you have an yeah, an HR team or recruitment team, um, and they have a lot of workload right now because everything is done remotely, then you can reallocate uh, some of the workload to other employees and offer them work from home um, opportunities. Provide, as mentioned earlier, provide um, yeah, back burner projects um, to other employees that needs work. This would mitigate the risk of employee burnout, especially those who are um, working extended hours because they're required um, by your current process um, by having a share in the current workload. Um, and again, this would provide a continuance of essential business operations. And again, this is supported by Dolly Labor Advisory number 17. It's legal to do this. Next would be, um, and I highly recommend this, temporarily, re, sorry, temporarily waive or relax attendance policies. If um, you are, you have half, maybe a quarter of your workforce are still working in the offices, you're allowed to do so. Maybe um, temporarily waive your attendance policies um, considering the situation um, and understand that employees can be tardy, can be absent beyond their control. There are a lot of checkpoints, checkpoints here and there. This would actually support uh, those struggling um, on balancing their work and family needs. And it can actually help you as well by reducing dismissals, um, which would result in less hirings. So remember, um, this would provide lesser cost to you in terms of hiring costs and training costs, etc. So for the interim, let's not be too strict on attendance. Next um, is building a culture of donating and volunteering. So um, you can you can be creative on this. You can try to implement this. Um, seek for volunteers who are, who are able to share their spare laptops. Maybe they have a laptop and they have a desktop at home. Um, so that others who does not have, and you also can buy because of um, our vendors not really able to provide. Um, you still can provide work to those who does not have a PC or a laptop. So maybe just help out on how the logistics of um, acquiring the laptop and providing it to uh, those who are in need. You can also, this is something new, develop a policy enabling employees to donate their earned leaves, their earned paid time off to other employees who are in need. So you'll be surprised um, by how employees are really, uh, really would want to help uh, their peers, single moms um, who no longer have um, leave time um, and they would want to do their share in helping and donate their leave. So it would be the same cost um, for you, but you're, uh, building that culture of volunteering and donating. Next is to address pay gaps. And there are um, a number, I've also heard a number of companies who did this. 
um, if we, if the option earlier is not available, considering um, providing paid days um, for employees with negative leave balances. Just for the time being, um, let's let's pay them for the days that they are uh, they can't work because of personal um, things they need to address, family errands, etc and maybe just adjust it later on as soon as we're back to normal or um, provide prorated 30th month pay to employees. They've earned it anyway. So if you have not done it yet, then you can start doing it instead of paying it in December. If you have, uh, if you are, if your company is able to, then why not start paying out January to say May to your employees and the way they've earned that already. Do it in lump sum or do it on a monthly basis to provide extra allowance for them. Lastly, um, motivation strategies. So, now, number one, and this is almost the same, um, motivation strategies are almost the same with retention uh, strategies that we've talked about earlier. Um, temporarily offer premium pay for extended working hours or hazardous conditions. So, uh, and there are um, companies who offer hazard pay for their employees, which is good. It's not required by the law. Uh, to offer hazard pay for the private sector. But if uh, you want to continuously motivate your people, um, especially if they really can't work from home, then try offering something to them so you can still continuously um, do your business operations. This would actually provide recognition to employees who are important um, for yeah, your continued business operations. Next would be spot bonuses. No, not really fancy, but in small denominations for extraordinary work. Uh, you may have been um, doing this in the past. If not, start doing it now. If you've already done this in the past, maybe um, double the effort considering the situation. Consider offering spot bonuses, gift cards, um, grocery, I don't know, gift certificates, etc. for extraordinary work, extra effort, and for people who are going above and beyond what is expected of them. This would show appreciation for um, their work that they're doing above um, expectations, even if they're not being monitored, even if they're at home. So just it's important to be sure that we provide clear communication as to why um, spot bonuses are given, are awarded, how, etc., to promote fairness and entitlement risk. Just two more slides left, um, or three. Train, retrain, or cross-train employees. Focus on um, developing your employees as well and preparing them to the surge of demand after this pandemic. So train your staff for new roles and responsibilities, make them understand how other departments work. You can tap um, the assistance of your department heads, of your um, unit managers, etc., to come up with a training material on introducing their department and what they do so we can also um, provide greater meaning and impact um, to these employees and they can check if they wanted to move to that in the future or if your if your organization is currently restructuring its, its business model maybe come up with something that would introduce them to the core of your business so they become attracted to moving in the long run so don't be afraid to train. It's a, learning is really important um, in employees development and growth. So train staff for new roles and responsibilities. There are companies, including ourselves as well, who provide online in-house training. 
So you just come up with your employees who are available, provide um, your challenges, what you need to achieve uh, in your organization, and we can um, tailor fit um, a training program to help them out and ensure that they're engaged. Of course, this would be done on a separate platform, preferably Zoom, where we can they can interact and share thoughts, etc. So this could eventually help your current and future um, business operations and increases motivation as well. Next would be create virtual activities promoting teamwork. So, so this would help um, decrease loneliness, isolation. So consider continuous, not just one, but maybe a continuous virtual employee engagement activities. If you have a spare employee, make him or her um, an employee engagement um, ambassador and just his or her job is just to think of ways to engage employees um, to promote inclusion and teamwork, especially now that they're working from home and they're alone, they're isolated, they're not with their peers. So you can, there are examples, you can have Kahoot, if you're familiar with Kahoot. There are Mobile Legends, Call of Duty. You can conduct e-tournaments, stream it live. Um, you can conduct TikTok competitions, dress up as a Netflix character, etc. Uh, there are endless possibilities uh, that you can do to continuously promote um, inclusion and teamwork. So this would keep your employees engaged, would keep them motivated, and as a result would provide um, higher, better productivity for your organization. Lastly, don't forget to always recognize employees wherever they are. They're um, in the offices, they're at home. Recognize employees. The need for frequent recognition is now higher than ever. It's We can't see them, we can't tap them at the back, we can't um have a quick chat with them so it's important to recognize the smallest effort maybe just sending an email blast or posting it on your social media pages etc it's important um, consider peer-to-peer -peer recognition if you have um, that platform um, where an employee can recognize another then that's great this is in addition to awards and top-down recognition. And do, um, as cliche as it is, do continue recognize birthdays, work anniversaries, do virtual celebrations. This would definitely um, result to higher productivity. All right. So I leave you with this quote as well. HR are really fond of quotes. It's a COVID quote. So COVID-19 offers us the chance to change who we were and what we stood for. It would be a shame to miss this opportunity for a second chance or for the second time around. We're given this um, chance to change how we do things. Um, let's not waste it. That's by Anthony Hinks. All right, so thank you so much, um, everyone. Thank you, corporate frontliners. If you have um, any inquiries um, in the future or you'd be needing help in terms of headhunting, online in-house training, or any HR stuff that you would need assistance from, feel free to contact our organization, our company. We're operational seven days a week. So we'd be more than happy to help you out. Jester? All right, thank you very much. Uh, all right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mikael Balansag, for a very uh, beneficial session. All right, uh, again, a recap of uh, what uh, Mr. Mikael uh, said earlier is uh, we should speed up the hiring process, no? use creative job titles, okay? offer sign on bonuses, cash or non cash, utilize third party recruiters or headhunting firms temporarily. Increase pay for high demand roles, connect companies that laid off employees, 
offer flexible retention or work hours or schedules, so offer opportunity to work remotely for jobs that typically can't. So it might be a research, not just be creative and be, uh, just reinvent, okay? Uh, re reallocate employees and or responsibilities to balance workload and um, temporarily waive or relax attendance policies. Build the culture of um, donating and uh, volunteering, address pay gaps, temporarily offer premium pay for extended working hours or hazardous condition. Provide small uh, denomination spot bonuses, train, retrain, or cross-train, and of course, recognize our employees. So uh, that ends this session. So we will be seeing you again later afternoon. Uh, so uh, thank you. We'll be uh, letting you go now, Mr. Michael. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right. So let's welcome.